Hopefully I'm on the right channel today. <laughs> hi guys, Jacqueline Addo, hi, Docas, hi. How are you guys doing? I just got my head done, so I'm trying not to laugh so hard. <laughs> Priscilla, hi. I'm trying not to laugh so hard because I feel like it's a bit uptight here. Don't worry, it's all my natural hair. How are you guys doing? Um, I don't think I put my glasses back in here. Thank you, Ebus. Thank you. It's been a while since I did a live video. Yes, I'm hanging in there. I know, Stephanie, wow, it's been ages. Wow, Stephanie, how are you? How are the kids doing? All right, guys, so I'm just going to get to the chase of this video. I just wanted, I didn't want to do a live video, but I had to do a live video because um, it's been a while since I did a video. And for those of you who are asking me, I'm pregnant. If I'm pregnant, I will let you guys know, okay? Because um, I don't want to be hustled about that topic. So Priscilla, hi, another Priscilla. It's like I have, I know too many Priscillas in Ghana. My sister is called Priscilla. I have a bunch of friends called Priscilla. It's a really common name. Jo, jo, I would say Jeff, Joff, Evan, Evan. It's been a while, hi. So, okay, so I did this video. Recently, I've been bench watching some YouTube videos on like, you know, people moving to Ghana. I guess I didn't know how big this thing is. Uh, so African Americans, especially moving, they are finding their roots. Our sisters and brothers are finding their roots. Can I get an amen? Amen. They are finding their roots. I'm so excited. And so they are moving to Ghana. And I'm very, very excited to hear this. Okay. So I'm just <laughs> Master K. Trading places. People move to US, so we move to Ghana. It's true. Like I'm telling you, like for me, I feel like I need my senses in check. Like whenever I go to Ghana, I am appreciative of the things, the life I've, I have here. But there's no place like home. There's this sense of peace you get when you go to Ghana. Whenever I'm in Ghana, right, before the... burden it's like it's like shackles have been taken off me i don't know if anybody experiences this but i feel like shackles have been taken off me all of a sudden it's like i am not worried i am not stressed i can eat as much as i want and not even gain a single pound when i'm in ghana so ghana is is just a place for me i i like to visit i would even like to live there um for an extended period of time but now i know like with my husband and everything we're young couples you know we are working trying to make a living um i will want to put more like much thought into it versus if i wasn't married i'll just pack my bags and i'll be like hasta mañana like <laughs> future hi <laughs> alexis hi so i'll just pack my bags and and be like bye felicia like i'll just say bye felicia to the u.s and be gone to ghana because even though in Ghana we have our problems, you know, everything is not like um, the way it is here. But the community that you have, the, the things you have, the things you are, about, you are able to do, you have a stress-free life. If you have a stable income, I always say these things. I say in Ghana, right, if we can have like the power, our power crisis is, get, is getting better from what I've heard. If we can have stable health care, like really good health care and get better roads, like better roads, stable health care and um, power. This is these three things. Most of us will be like, what am I even doing in America? Like we will pack our bags and just be gone. We will not even say bye to America. We'll just be like. We're over you. Not that we don't appreciate this country, but home is where, like they say, the heart is. So I'm really excited when I find, I'm finding out, you know, African Americans are making the move back home. And my message to Ghanaians is this. I know sometimes, yes, we are all brothers and sisters. Ghanaians sometimes can be mean when they want to be mean, you know. We should help them. We should help them because, you know, when they are coming home, they are renting, they are building, 
They are, build, they are bringing businesses to Ghana. And besides, they are, all the knowledge they have had here that they've not been able to use it, not that they can't use but they've not been able to use it, or they've not been given the opportunity to showcase it. I feel like we should embrace it. In fact, I feel like I know they have this African in diaspora and things like that, but I just feel like um, they need to set up something very, very like deep, um, an organization really, really deep that is welcoming these people. There has to be legit, biz um, legit businesses set up to help these people find land. Oh, Yoruba. Oh, that's good. That's good. So visit Yoruba land, okay? Visit Yoruba land. Make sure you visit. So we have to set up a, a system in place because I am reading comment. There's this guy that I've been watching his, um, his YouTube channel. Please check it out. It's called Native Born. Native, N-A-T-I-V-E. Born is B-O-R-N-E. He's African-American. He has five kids. He and his wife moved to Ghana. Please, 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 if you've been watching these videos, subscribe to their channel and help them. Yes, subscribe to their channel and help them watch their videos. Share, share with families that you know are making the plans to Ghana. But I feel like, yes, Ghana needs to set up a, 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 a you know, I hope this guy that is doing it, I can't his name is John, will be able to work out with the government and set up a legit business. Because sometimes, you know, one land can be sold to 20 people. Like, it, it is what it is. Not that you're putting Ghana down, but sometimes a piece of land can be sold to about 20 people. And can you imagine you've been here, worked your whole life, work your bottom off in snow, in winter, in summer, and then for somebody to, to not even think about it and dupe you or scam you of your money, that is very heartbreaking. So I tell people, please, if you are planning to move to Ghana in an extended period of time, I would say it would be better to build than to um, rent. You know, if you have the money, by all means, and you want to live in this fancy neighborhood, by all means. But in the long run, it's going to save you money. If you're able to get a piece of land, don't Accra is so crowded right now. So you might want to go to the outskirts of Accra or even Kumasi, where things are a lot cheaper than Accra. Things are a lot cheaper in Kumasi than in Accra. So you might, and it depends on where your location is also in Kumasi. So find legit people that you can work with don't even me i'm in ghana you know i'm from ghana born and raised i have family even if i intend if i'm doing something in ghana i have to be careful the fact that they are family does not mean they cannot take advantage of you so to my people that want to move back home it's great nowhere it's perfect even america there are lands in Takradi to thank you for bringing that up. So there's Takradi, there's, there's uh, Kumasi, they are the northern part of Ghana. It doesn't mean, because for some reason, even my husband is like, if I have to live in Ghana for like a year, I don't think I can do Accra because there's so much fuel, there's so much, you know. So, but make sure if you're buying, buying the land, it's verified before you even pay for it. Sometimes if you get a good contractor that you begin to work with, you begin to work with you can have that contractor um verify the land for you you don't have to be in ghana if i'm doing like I, I i'm not in ghana but you can have legit people i know legit people that i work with i they are legit people you can work with that will be truthful they will account for any every single penny that you give them or you send them hi so just be careful just be careful you can um you can get rent as low as like let's say 500 dollars a month so if you are planning to move to Ghana, I will not say just pack your backpack and just go move to Ghana. I will say you can find a place to rent for about two to three months. Excuse me. So if you are paying $500 a month or $700 a month, so you could come up to, um, depending on how many months you want to stay, so you can pay $1,000 for two months or, or, or three months or twelve or $1,400 for three months. Just stay there for that length and look around, you know, look around and make sure you do your research make sure you survey the area that you want to leave and then come here do the preparation before you move don't just get up and be like okay i am moving i'm telling you you might be a good person but not everyone around us is good you know because sometimes i will read thank yeah we are hoping the government will do so because sometimes I'll read and people say i'm in ghana and people are not being nice and i'm like ghana like ghanaians this is these are our brothers and sisters coming back home. Look at your skin color. Look at their skin color. You are not different from them. Let us welcome them with an open arm. 
But if they are coming, if you are in America and you're going through all these things that you're going through in this country and you feel like, okay, I'm going to the motherland and you are getting uh, the same treatment, like seriously, it's not cool. So Ghanaians, let's get it together and help this our brothers and sisters. Ghana, yeah, Ghana is very, very big. So do not generalize everything. That's why I say some people. And Ghana, I will say it's safe. We have other issues. The only issues that I will say that some people are experiencing is petty, petty theft, you know, petty, petty thief, petty theft. That, let me say that. So, but which is everywhere. But we are not like, I mean, gunning down. Our teenagers are not gunning down each other on the streets and, and all this nonsense and you know it's not going on in, in it's not going on in ghana so it will, it's like petty theft pickpocketing and things like that those i mean which are, is like everywhere are you going to ghana <laughs> yes I'm, i am not going to ghana soon yeah but i'm not going to ghana soon but that doesn't mean for me i don't ever like last year i was in ghana i can just decide by the end of this year i'm going to ghana i don't like to like um maybe like be planning things and things like that. So I just, if I want to go, I want to go. If I miss home, I miss home. If I miss my mom, I miss my mom. I need to get some breast milk. So I have to go home and get me some breast milk. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so yes, and the thing about Ghana, even me, I'm a Ghanaian, born and raised in Ghana, okay? When I go to Ghana, I, I, I don't, Ghana is too hard. I don't dress, even here, I don't dress all these fancy things. And, but like sometimes some Ghanaians, we want to take advantage of you because they think you don't speak the language. You know, even me, what do you need to go to Ghana? I'll go through that. They think I don't speak the language. So, so me, I, me, I'm tough. Oh. Me, me, I'm very, very tough. And so, and, but I like to shop with my mom. Like she'll give them a run for their money. So find a Ghanaian, like a Ghanaian girl, like some, a friend that you can really trust. You know, you can really trust and that person if they are truthful, they can walk you on the ins and don't be going to Ghana just because you're African American or you never went to Africa and then they, they will tell you um this thing is a 20 Ghana cities and you to you remove 20 Ghana cities. No, make sure you know how to uh, hair bargain the hair, talk down on price, you know. If they really want to sell that thing, if you offer them 15 Ghana cities and they say no, you'll be like, I'm walking away, they will, they will say, Okay, come back. You understand what I'm saying? So sometimes people will even take advantage just because of, I will even be speaking cheap, but they will look at the skin. They will look at my skin and they'll be like, no, this person's not from here. So they can up prices based on something like that just because they will think you don't understand them. You don't understand. So that's why when I'm in Ghana with Steve, I'm going shopping. I do not, I do not allow him to follow me because Steve will just be like, just pay for it. And so, and I don't want that. So I'll be like, stay at home. I'll be that. So when you're going to Ghana, first things first, when you're going to Ghana, I will not, I know that they at the airport they say you can get your um I know it's really I know at the airport they will tell you you can get a visa. Don't do that. I I don't I, I'm not putting Ghana down, but don't do that because make sure your passport and your documents are up to date. Your visa you can apply to the Ghana embassy in Washington. You can apply, I think when you go to their website, you can apply, you can fill it out, send your passport. If you, you can apply for um, the multiple, which is like $120. The one time, the one year thing is, I think, I don't know if it's 80 or um, $100, but the multiple is, I believe, 120 or so. For five years, they will give you. Because the reason why, with my experience, that Steven, um, we, I got him a five-year visa when we got to Ghana. I don't know if the visa had expired. We, we, he didn't even check because he thought he had had a five-year visa, and so he's okay. So when we went to Ghana at the airport, he was like, babe, my visa has expired. I said, no problem. Let's get one. Let's get one in Ghana. And, and then the guy was, I don't know if he said it was $120 or something like that. And I was like, okay. So, and then I told Steven, I said, tell them. Um, Steven was like, okay, so I pay for it. I need a receipt. When he said he needs a receipt, the guy flipped out and said, you need a receipt you the, like the guy was like just went mad and said you know we are going to sit send you back on a plane back to your country like i lost my cool at that point i'm like i lost my cool i lost my cool at that point i was like i are you kidding me and they were like who is he visiting who is this? And i was at the airport with my mom and my brother-in-law i'm like for crying out loud i am a i am a Ghanaian. 
I understand you have to do things the protocol, but what is wrong with somebody asking for a receipt if they tell you they're going to pay for the visa? So, oh my goodness, it dragged on. I felt so terrible for him. He was in there. He went to this place. Then they went and made, one of the officials went to make up a letter. And so I'm telling you, long story short, make sure, make sure, because sometimes some people, I'm telling you, might be good, but not everyone. Some people might want to take advantage of a certain situation that you find yourself in. So make sure that you do your research. Washington, I, I always apply for my visa. Like I think mine is um, it's about to expire. I always apply for the five year one, you know? So whenever I want to go to Ghana, I pick my passport, I'm gone. And you will get it in as slow as two to three weeks. When you send it to them, you can do express. They will send it to you quickly. I've never had any issues with um, the Washington, um, Ghana Embassy in Washington. So that is what I've been doing. I, I, I might not move to Ghana. I might not move to Ghana, but I, I like permanently because, you know, um, it would take Steven some, I, I have to put him also into consideration. I, it would take him getting adjust, used to it. But in, I know someday, like, you know, some years to come, down the line, we will spend extended period of time in Ghana rather than going for a month and two and two. who wants to go to Ghana and spend a month? I beg, no me. So I want to, you know, work him because he wasn't born there. He's been to Ghana, I believe two, two, two times, two, three times. So I just want him to work him up so he knows the up and in and up and things like that. And then um, have a better place, a comfortable place for him, for us when we'll be, um, when we live there, so that kind of thing. So yeah, but when you're going to Ghana, make sure you have that. Um, don't carry such a large amount of money on you, like especially if you are thinking, okay, I want to go to Ghana and buy a land. That's fair enough. But until you know the land you are buying, until you have seen the land, you have accessed the land, you are verified. Do not take such a large amount of money on you at the first time. You can always, always, depending on how long you are living there, you can always come back and send that money to whoever you are purchasing the land from. You can always, if you have somebody you can trust. So don't take such a huge amount of money and be careful the kind of conversations you make in public places. Be, be very, very careful. Oh, yes, yes, when I was coming, yes, yes, I had um, $20,000, yes, yes, and you're in a taxi or you're in a public place. Just be careful of the kind of conversation you make. And then um, I know that if you're not doing anything, let's say if you go meet somebody somewhere and they're saying sit and wait in the car, you can do that. But I would suggest, not that it's not safe, but there are things every things happen everywhere. I would suggest you just get out of the car and then move to like a crowded place or something like that. So, because I mean, things happen, but relatively Ghana is a very safe place. It's actually one of the safest place on earth to live. It's actually one of the safest place, but we do have our issues but if you plan on moving to ghana like i said i would recommend you build your own house you can build your own um you buy a land build something for about 30 grand 30 grand um yeah maybe it depends on how you build it or what you want to build it can even cost you little than 30 it depends depends on where thank thank you since it depends on where you want to be located, but African Americans that are coming home, we should accept them with an open arm. We should, we should accept them because to be leaving in America, wherever it is that their country of origin, where they are leaving and they are not being treated right in this country, they are not having that freedom. And for them to say, okay, I am going back to the motherland. I'm going back to my root. And then for us, for them to come and then we don't help them to grow, to make them even feel as if that was the best move they did. Like, Seriously, that should never happen. We, I mean, we as Ghanaians, please don't mind us. Eh? I, there are some mentalities we still need to get over. We still need to get over. There's plenty of land. There's a lot of things for everybody. They are not coming to take over our country. They are not. They want to meet their brothers and sisters that they've not met. So let's welcome them. So if you're planning to move into Ghana, I would say yes, do it. But please do your research. Do your research before you buy the land and pay for it. Make sure you the paper is there. Make sure you, like I said, you have verified it. You have a really good contractor lined up. You can be building a house as low as sending $500 home once you buy the land, once you purchase the land. Like I said, if you have a really good contractor, somebody that is faithful, God-fearing, you can be sending $500 home every month for that. 
And then, yeah, by the time you realize two, three years, or maybe if you can speed it up, your house will be built and it will be ready for you to go home rather than saying, okay, 30,000 and I want to use that to just start from small, start, start from very small. And then you want to also live, like I said, in the outskirts because right now Accra is like choked and most of those up rises that they are building, most of them looks like an apartment in the USA for maybe a two bedroom or three bedroom and they are charging sometimes 50, 60, $70,000 for it. Whereas I'm not putting those companies down by all means, <laughs> whereas, but people will do it because of like, maybe they will say it has 24 hours security. It has this, it has that, but you can also build your own and make it work for you. Just make sure you have the, you're finding the right people. And even if you say, I know this person, he's faithful. He will be, just be careful. You understand what I'm saying? Watch your own back. Don't let anybody watch it for you because you don't know. <laughs> okay. So that any, any more questions about moving to Ghana? So watch Native Born. Like I said, Native Born. N-A-T-I-V-E. Born is B-O-R-N-E. Please subscribe to his channel. I'm begging you, sellers and subscribers, subscribe to his channel because the guy is doing an amazing job putting information out there, educating people. And, you know, um, he could be making, I mean, this could be also like a source of income for him. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of you can also suggest things he can do. The banks are corrupting us. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So I, I, people are moving. So we are all going to move. We are all going to make the move to Ghana. So grab that land. <laughs> do something. <laughs> I'm telling you. You just have. There are people. You can't say no one is to be trusted. They are really. I I know some people. Like I I I have people that I work with that. I would, I, I, I would say I, tr I do, I trust them, you know, I trust them. So you just have to, those people, they are genuine people everywhere. You know, they are genuine people everywhere. They are also bad ones everywhere. You just have to be careful. Yeah, you can get yourself a guide in Ghana um, for safety reasons. You can get yourself a guide. If any of you need an information or... <laughs> If you want me to help you do research, just let me know. I'm not going to charge you anything. I don't know. You can donate. I'm just, I'm just kidding. But just um, email me, stellazonetv at gmail.com. But yeah, you can get a guide in Ghana. Like when I'm in Ghana with Steven, he doesn't need a guide. So we, we'll go to like Kakum National Park, Achimota Forest and all these places uh, with the driver that we had. And I mean, it was, it, it's safe. It's not like... It is just, you know, um, it's not safe. It's safe. It's, it's fairly safe. But I'm just saying when in terms of when you're dealing with things, people like buying large quantities of things, like you want to buy a land and things like that, you, you want to be careful. And learn how to buy again. You know, when you go to some place, learn quickly how things are done and how people move around things. You understand? Learn, learn quickly. Because if you go and they tell you it's five Ghana cities, meanwhile, the original price it's maybe two Ghana cities, but they detected from your accent. Boy, it's not from here. So it'll be like five Ghana cities. So jar rockstone for your project. That's good, good. Kudos to you. Kudos to you. So yes, everyone doing a project in Ghana, I pray that um, God will continue to help you, strengthen you, provide for you so that you will continue to um, be able to put up this project and get done. So maybe We'll have an organization one day when I be Ghana, we can all meet. I don't know, but how we can we can do a meetup or something. But seriously, I'm very proud of our brothers and sisters back here in America that are um, moving back home, that are moving the that are making a move back home to the motherland. I will say on behalf of Ghanaians, <laughs> you are welcome. Uh, Brenda, if you say Africans or something, so I, I don't even want to get into slave trade. If you are saying Africans, so that's how sometimes they will paint it to say that we sold ourselves into slave trade. Like what was there? I was not there, so me, I'm not going to say what I don't know. But if you really, really want to know the basics of how you say, you know, Americans, these white people, the Arabs were the ones that really started slave trade, the Arabs. That's why sometimes I don't say what I don't know, you know, I will not just come out and say something and sometimes you would think you are saying the right thing, but then you might sound like very ignorant. So um, you can't say that. And besides, there are people that sold other people to slavery. They are dead. They are gone. 
<laughs> they are, they've died a long time ago. They are gone, you know. The world will not watch. Because even right now you have people in, um, I had a story of, I, I didn't see, of blacks being sold as slaves in Dubai. No, not Dubai, excuse my language, at, um, what was the place? Libya. Uh -huh, Libya, and they will say their own brothers are selling them and, and things like that. So you just have to be careful. We don't sell you into slavery. You have in countries in America here, where when you go to Walmart, I don't know if you people have seen it, when you go to Walmart, every time there's thousands of people missing. Where are, the, where are these? I'm not going to even get into it. Where are these people? Sometimes I wonder, I'm like, this is America. Like, where are these people? So at the um, Americans or the British, or they were not the ones that actually started slave trade. If you read, the Arabs were the ones that started slave trade. And the reason why there were no blacks over there was because they castrated the blacks so that the blacks could not reproduce. You understand what I'm saying? So they were the ones that, you know, took, took, took. They started the whole slave thing, took Africans into. So, but that's, that's just, um, you can, let's learn on our history and our forefathers, our ancestors. We know, they would say they sold each other for, into slavery, but, but we really don't know what led up to it. You know, you really, if, if they're holding a knife to your throat and they are saying, we are, they are falsely taken these people away from their families and they will come back and say we sold our this could all be something cooked up i'm, I'm not saying but it, it could, who knows we were i was not there but it could be something that is because i feel like for so for far too long african americans and and even africans back home we've lived in a separate world i feel like we've been fighting amongst each other even if we've wronged each other, I feel like it is time for us to forgive and move on. You know, it is time for us. I know it's painful. And it is time for us to move on because you, I don't know the truth. Um, I don't know. Like, I wasn't there, so I don't know, like, what really happened that you are saying there was. Because if you, if you um, go to Cape Coast, I don't know how many of you have gone to Cape Coast Castle where they kept the slave, even the stench there. The stench there, no, they, they could be removing people with force. You could be having removing people. How would you? I don't, I know my Africans, we are hard working, we know our history, we know our history. So, these things they will come and tell us that African Americans hate Africans and they will go to Africa and say another things to Africans there. And so, you you see, we are both fighting again. We are, we are fighting a lost battle when they know that when we come together, we will achieve greater things. Go figure. Like, I don't know. But if I'm wrong, I stand corrected. Somebody can correct me. But um, I would say that uh, <laughs> I stand corrected. But I, I would say that we need to build this relationship. It's not just in Ghana. I would say in Africa, you know, because... Africans will have this perception about African Americans and African Americans will have this perception about Africans. How did it all get started? You know, because they will tell us we are selling each other to slavery. And even up to now, they will tell you that we are still selling each other, even in America here. So it is time. I mean, you can't, you cannot reject your own because these other people, these other races, nobody knows what they are doing. I mean, in their own corner, but they are not bringing it to light. It is only Africans and African Americans that they will bring our things to light to turn us against each other. But whoever, if they sold us to slavery and ever, they are dead, they are gone. This is a new generation. This is a new rising sun and we should let us rise and rise and burn bright. So yeah, if you want to go to Ghana, by all means, go to Ghana. They are lovely people. We have people with great experience. It's just like over here too. You know, I would, I could have said, you know, African Americans, I've met some African Americans here that are not nice, that they will look at me. But that is just human, that's just people's perception. It doesn't mean that that is how all African, it would be, it would be very wrong for me to think that way. Oh, this is all how African Americans are. No, it would be very, very wrong. And I feel like it's sort of like a backward thinking to think that we each have our own attitude. So I'm not going to judge. Um... <laughs> yeah, so yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know, leave your, we are all God's children, forgive one another. 
Let us thrive. Let us thrive. Sometimes it gets me because when I see some of, especially some of these celebrities that they will see our ancestors, you know, the, the black, uh, uh, and they don't go to Africa to even do anything because if they even hear those, I mean, black people that are learned and all that are even able to take the knowledge that they have or have acquired, you have, Af you have Africans doing wonders. Like recently I was watching a video about a Nigerian. I forgot, I forgot his name. But he owns um, Gatwick Airport in London and he owns um, another airport. And like you can see the guy, I'm telling you, are doing exploits here. But they would let us know that our country is nothing to write home about and so we give up on our own. We, so we give up on our own and we help them and we build, our, we build their nation. And they talk down on us, they feed us whatever they want to feed us and we accept it. Yes, I do have a video on how to be back. So, yes, girl. Yes, boys. Yes, sisters and brothers. Welcome home to Ghana. Welcome home to the motherland. We'll make it fun. Once you get used to it, you know, it will take sometimes people want to warm up to you. Thank you. Sometimes people want to, they will, it takes time for them to warm up to you. Like some people in Ghana that would say, oh, Ghanaians are not nice. And it's because of what they've heard about African-Americans, just like African-Americans say is what they've heard about Africans. So it takes time for them to get used to you, to say, oh, this was all a lie that we've been fed with. I just feel like it's time for us to all come together for a better black nation. That's all I would say. I'm not preaching, um, <laughs> I sound like an actor. <laughs> But yes, guys, this, this is all for today. Um, thank you so much. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, about if you want to move to Ghana, leave comments in the comment section. Check out Native Born. I know there are other people, but so far, yes, but so far he's the only one that I, I have been bench watching his show. I'm a Ghanaian. <laughs> I'm a Ghanaian, so... Um, and I believe I was born and raised in Ghana, but this guy and his family, when will I be on again? I don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you go to Accra Beach, Labadi Beach, if you, uh, Ghana, uh, experience it, like experience it for yourself, experience it for yourself and you understand what I'm talking about. Like, I'm t I don't know what it is, but whenever I go to Ghana, I'm like, Oh, it's like I have, it's like something has been unleashed or like, I, I'm like, you know, no boundaries. I'm, I'm not all stressed up and all tied up. Or, and not, even in America, you, you can, you can be at home and not do it still. You know, it's like you are not living that kind of life that you want to live. But when you're in Ghana, I don't know, there's this sense of peace. We don't have it all. How much in Ghana? No. We, we, not, we might not have it all as a nation, but peace is something that we really enjoy. We really, if we say we genuinely love you, we genuinely love you. Just like here. If we say we genuinely love you, we genuinely love you. We welcome you into our home. We will eat with you. We we'll throw parties and all that. Um, Jof, I, Evan, that's what I'm going to call you. So I can't. Yeah, next year, brother, just go. Next year. Next year, enjoy it. Just have the time of your life. And you learn from every bad experience, every bad mistake. You learn from it. So, um, yeah, thank you. American has been good to me. I will say that. But um, I will not trade Ghana. You know, life is, you will say, easy here. Things are accessible. But I will not just give up my Ghana. Arms Rare Restaurant, no. Yes, thank you. Fake ass three dollar bill. What is that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right, guys. So thank you for tuning in. Leave the comments. Keep the comments coming. If you are going on to Ghana, if it's your first time, double seven. Okay, okay. Ghana will forever be my. Thank you, guys. If you're going to Ghana, just let me know. They do have Ghana in diaspora. I I don't know how that is going.
<laughs> it must be. I know where I'm from. That's the thing. And that is why this African American, if somebody says slave, 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 if these African Americans, that's why they're going back home to, 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 to be connected to their ancestors, you know, to be connected to their ancestors. And there is nothing wrong with it. That if somebody is calling me a slave and a slave and a slave, I'm not like, I'm not worried. You understand what I'm saying? Because because I am I know I'm not a slave. You see, it's things like this and people like this, people like this that they need in Africa. You know, you beat that. Uh, uh, um. <laughs> Whatever. But yeah. Thank you guys. Have a lovely uh what's today? Wednesday. Have a lovely Wednesday. Check out Native Born. Check out his channel. Please check out and subscribe. Check out and subscribe, okay? Native Born. Native Born. Dwayne, enjoy your trip back home. Seize the day. I will pray for you so that you will feel better about yourself because apparently um, you, are, you don't feel better about yourself. So there's always racist people. Yes, Native Born. <laughs> for super but you are right too. you are right you are right all right guys have a lovely wednesday afternoon i'm just going to sip my tea and then put my feet up and actually i'm going to do some other house chores bye guys